Jessica Parsons. I use the pronouns she and her, and I'm the product manager for Netlify's build system. I am here to talk to you today about Netlify partner integrations. This is kind of an interesting lightning launch because it's not about a feature that we're releasing, but about some features and tools that other services are releasing on Netlify's platform. To tell that story, I need to go back to May at the last Jamstack conference, at which point we released build plugins. Build plugins are a way for anyone to plug into Netlify's build system, customize it to work the way that they want to, and then they can share those customizations with others to plug in without having to write extra code. To review a little bit, I'm going to talk about what it takes to build a build plugin. First thing you need to do is create a manifest file that specifies the plugin's properties. At a minimum, this is a name so that you can refer to the plugin. The other file involved is the file that actually performs the plugin actions. This is a JavaScript file with event handlers that run at different stages of the build, plugging into sections of the build as it runs. These are the two files that make up a plugin. You can stick this in a repository, refer to it in your netlify.toml config file, and it will run in your local builds as well as on Netlify's build system. But you can also take these files, package them up, and share them with others. To do this, you first start by publishing the plugin to NPM. This way, other users can use your plugin as well by installing it by using npm install and then referencing the package name for the plugin inside of their netlify.toml config file. But you can eat that once they've done that, they can run it locally or inside of Netlify's build. But you can also take that a step further. You can add it to Netlify's plugin directory inside of the Netlify UI. Anybody can do this. In order to do it, you make a pull request against the Netlify plugins repo with some fields with information about your plugin. Once that PR is merged, any Netlify user can install your plugin directly from the Netlify UI. It's pretty powerful, and many people in the community have found it useful and have shared plugins within the Netlify UI. Among them are several plugins that involve cache control for popular build frameworks, uh, plugins for site performance optimization, and a whole variety of tools that customize people's builds that they've been sharing within the Netlify UI. We've also found that in addition to community members, representatives of companies are using build plugins to integrate their services within the Netlify ecosystem. And today I'm going to talk about three of those. Three par new partner integrations that have just been released. And as it turns out, each of those three have been built in three different ways. To start the first one, I'm going to talk about SNCC. They've created a build plugin that works with an environment variable. SNCC's security plugin checks your code for vulnerabilities on every build. Then it fails the build if it finds any vulnerabilities. Then it provides steps and tools to help you fix those vulnerabilities automatically. This can provide a lot of security for your site, but it's worth noting that because it's interacting with SNCC's service, it requires a SNCC account and an API token. That's not automatically inside of Netlify's UI. So how does SNCC solve for this? The way that they do is by having users supply the token as an environment variable on Netlify. You can do this. Users can discover this by looking at the docs, or if they've installed the plugin without adding the environment variable, SNCC adds this helpful message within, within the build logs to explain what the next steps are to do that. If you're curious about how it works, you can also check out the tutorial I've linked on this slide for more information. Once the user has saved that environment variable, SNCC can access that within their plugin using process.env, just like you would in any other environment variables situation. They can use that environment variable to access their API and authenticate. Now, key takeaways for this method. This is the quickest and most popular method for integrating a service with Netlify uh, plugins. Uh, all of the services that I showed you before, all those company logos, they use the same exact um, method as SNCC does of having the user create an environment variable and connect with that way. And one of the things that nice about, is nice about this is it can be a good way to test the waters of creating an integration. It's fairly low uh, effort to create a plugin like this and then ask the users to add environment variables. So if you just want to try it out and you're not sure how it's going to go, it's a good place to start. But it is worth keeping in mind that it does create some user friction. If a user has to stop, go into another service, perhaps create an account, log in, find the API token, 
go back to Netlify and save it as an environment variable, you'll probably have some drop off and adoption along the way. So I'm going to talk about some solutions for getting around this issue. The next method is, is one that was used by Algolia, which is a build plugin plus a custom OLAP app. Perhaps earlier today you saw Algolia's lightning launch talking about their plugin. They go into more depth, but to summarize, the Algolia search crawler indexes your site for search after every deploy. It'll even create separate indexes per branch. So if you're doing a deploy preview or a branch deploy, you can see how the search works before you deploy to production. It also provides a snippet so you can add a search box to your site that's already customized to work with your Algolia instance. But it's also worth noting that this requires an Algolia account and an API key. Starting to sound familiar. <laughs> um, now, Algolia, instead of requiring the user to go to Algolia and find the API token, has used a method, for, a different method for doing this. They've created a custom OAuth app. So within their docs or their logs, when they, they instead send users to a separate interface that they've created with a Netlify login. This is an OAuth2 login, much like where you'd have a login with GitHub or a login with Google inside of the UI of another service. Once the cl user clicks this button and logs in with their Netlify account, this enables Algolia to create an account on Algolia using the Netlify login. Then in that interface, list and search the user's Netlify site so that the user can choose which site they'd like to install the plugin on. Then Algolia can set the environment variables and install the plugin on the site that the user selected. The takeaways of this is that that user experience is pretty smooth and it's also pretty powerful what an API consumer using a custom OAuth app can do. Just about anything that you can do in the Netlify UI, you can do with a custom OAuth app. And this can be added to an existing plugin. So if you've already created a plugin that's using the traditional method or the more popular method of putting, uh, asking the user to create a, an environment variable, you can add this by creating an OAuth app and it won't create breaking changes for existing installs. If you'd like to try it out, we've made an example app to get you started and see how that works. Now it's worth noting that when you're using, uh, the user is using this custom app, it could cause some friction there as well because they're logging into a different service. Though it's a smooth experience, they might hesitate if they're not familiar with the service that they're logging into. So I'm gonna talk about the third method for this. And this is in Nimbella. Uh, the third method was is being used by Nimbella, which is a build plugin plus partner add-ons API. Nimbella is a platform for serverless functions. It's built on top of Apache's OpenWhisk technology. Nimbella's plugin deploys functions from your repo to Nimbella Cloud, which enables you to have expanded runtimes using languages like Python, Java, PHP, Rust, and others. And it also provides a persistent data store so you can run stateful transactions with your functions. In addition to Nimbella's platform, the plugin creates an API gateway directly on your Netlify site that proxies requests from your site to your uh, functions that you've deployed onto Nimbella Cloud. But here it comes again, as it's worth noting, this requires a Nimbella account. Now, rather than using one of the other two methods, Nimbella has integrated with Netlify's partner add-ons API. And what this means is it enables some functionality so that Netlify customers can, via Netlify's CLI, run a single command and provision an instance on Nimbella. You can also, when you're using the partner add-ons API, create custom deployed in Netlify buttons. So you can have a template to get someone started from start to finish, including provisioning your integration within the new site that they've created. The way that this works is when the user runs one of those, Nimbella creates an anonymous service instance so that the user can start right away with no login required, and they never leave Netlify to get started. However, at some point, they're gonna to wanna to connect to Nimbella, and we have another CLI command that authenticates and grants access to the Nimbella admin panel. Now, takeaways for this method, it's really great because users can get started right away without ever leaving the trusted platform of Netlify. On the other hand, this does require more development as investment and coordination. Um, and so it's something you have to weigh in terms of the effort that you're putting in there. And it's worth noting that the installation methods that we have are still limited to CLI and deployed to Netlify buttons. Um, which brings me to my next talk thought, which is about the circle of feedback. 
Plugins are the next area that we're going to be focusing in the build system and expanding the plugins ecosystem and connections to other Jamstack services within Netlify. The ways that customers are already starting to do this and the ways that other companies are already starting to do this help inform the changes that we're going to make in the future. I'd love to talk to you about this at the topic table we're doing later today. It's called, What Does the Future of Jamstack Look Like for You? It's run by Marissa Morby, my coworker, who's a UX researcher, and I'll be there as well as a couple other Netlify employees and anyone who'd like to talk about what the Jamstack look like. If you're a developer or if you develop Jamstack tools for developers, we'd love to hear about what you see, what you'd like to see in the future. If that doesn't work out, come join us at the booth. You can talk about plugins and partnerships anytime. And you can also email us if you're interested at partners at netlify.com. If you'd like to revisit these slides or click on any of the links that are in them, you can go to netlify.com slash October Lightning 2020. Thank you.